What's up, y'all? Welcome on back. This is part two of my top 10 games of all time. So in part one, I kind of narrowed my games down to about, I think, five or six that I wanted to put on my top 10 list of all time. It was kind of a debate style episode. Well, now it's time to unleash my top 10 games of all time. Now, full disclaimer, this is my personal list. So if these games on my list are not your personal top 10, that's completely okay. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below what your top 10 is, and we can debate it that way. These are just my my favorite games of all time. These are the ones that resonated with me the most, the ones that I enjoyed playing the most. Uh, but without further ado, guys, let's fucking jump into this, all right? At number 10, Final Fantasy 16. This is a game that came out last year, and... To me, this was a game that was created by, like, 15-year-old boys, it feels like. Like, this felt like peak. Like, when I was growing up and watching Dragon Ball Z, and it was just dope-ass moment after dope-ass moment, and it was just it was just moments that I could just get hyped about, that's what Final Fantasy XVI was to me. It was just, like, moment after moment, scene after scene, it was just like, I wanted to jump up and just scream, like, fuck yes! I just felt like that entire game was me at my max hype. And the story of it was really, really great. I don't think the character development of it was as strong as some of the other Final Fantasy games, which does kind of hold it back from going up further on my list. And it is a little bit more linear in comparison to some of the other Final Fantasy games that we've gotten, but I'm not going to harp on that too much. I absolutely loved the combat in this game. It was you were able to you were able to really adapt it to your playstyle and play the game how you wanted to play with different styles of combat. I, I really loved that addition to the game. The cinematic sequences, the story, all that just absolutely phenomenal. If I if I just had to complain about one thing, I just think the character development was just not as good as some of the other Final Fantasy games. And I really did not like the fact that they backloaded the game with like 30 quests all at one time. And half of those were the quests that further developed your characters. I just, I did not care for that whatsoever. I wish they would have sprinkled that throughout the game a little bit more. But in terms of just a straightforward 60 hour playthrough of a Final Fantasy game, this is one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, I didn't even mention the the score of this, which was so fucking good. Like, if I was to rank my top 10 scores of all time, this would be so much higher on my list. Like, that score for Final Fantasy 16 was absolutely phenomenal. And it made all those hype moments even more hype. At number 9, I have Dead Cells. So Dead Cells is a game that I checked out on a whim several years ago, right after it came out. A lot of people had talked about it, so I was like, ah, oh, you know what, I'll, uh, I'll scope it out, check it out. And I think Dead Cells was my first roguelike experience. And I don't know if that makes me fall in love with it more or not, but here we are. I think the combination of all the accessories, you know, the collars, the weapons, the biomes, the enemies, all of that put together, this is just, this to me is a 10 out of 10 game. I don't know what they could do to make this game any better. And the developers gave us free content for years. I mean, yeah, you did have uh, a few paid DLC, but it was pretty pretty fucking cheap to be honest with you. And all of those all those DLCs were absolutely fantastic. With the exclusion of one being absolutely phenomenal, 10 out of 10, one of the best DLCs of all time, and that is The Return to Castlevania. I'm I'm not going to lie. A couple of years ago, I was thinking about my top 10 and whether or not Dead Cells would actually be in my top 10 still because, you know, we had started doing Final Fantasy 10 and the uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 deep dives. So I was wondering if Dead Cell was ever going to stay in my top 10. Return of Castlevania came out and it is without a doubt one of the best DLCs of all time. I fucking love that DLC. And that to me put dead cells back into my top 10 i think the uh i think the boss fights the the actual gameplay loop of where you die you get stronger come back and again you can play the game however you want you can make it more difficult by adding boss cells to your runs 
Or you can make it easier by taking away the boss cells, but then you don't get as great loot uh, further down the road. So I think they just do so much with this game to entice you to play on harder difficulties, but they understand that not everybody wants to do that, so you can still play it on the easier difficulties and have an amazing time. I just think, you know, five, ten years from now, we're going to see a lot of games kind of take on Dead Cells. I mean, a lot of games already have, so I think this is going to be one of the more influential indies of all time, for sure. But yeah, Dead Cells, number nine. I, I had a hard time not putting it up a little bit higher on my list. It's just, man, these next eight games are just so fucking good. And at number eight, this was the first game that we did a deep dive series for the podcast, and that was Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We dove balls deep into this game, and you can catch that deep dive series on any of your favorite podcast listening apps because it is audio only uh, as of right now. So, But Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was an experience for me because... It was like it took me a little while to get into the game. And, you know, Chris and Christian really harped on me. They said, look, it's going to take you a little while to get into it because it's a JRPG for sure. But once you fall in love with the game, you're going to fall in love with the game. The characters were so damn good. That story was so damn good. For them trying to go to this Elysium and then you have all the characters involved with that. It was just, to me... Out of my top 10, one of the better like overall stories. And each character had their own moment. There were several times during that deep dive series and me playing this game that I felt like my heart got ripped out. Like There were some great cinematic sequences and great emotional moments between these characters. And I haven't even mentioned the combat yet. The combat, I have never played a game in my life up to that point where I was still being given tutorials 20 30 40 hours into the game i was just flabbergasted at that and while i do think xenoblade chronicles 3 has the better combat it does not have the better story though Uh, xenoblade chronicles 2 has better everything else to me but that's not to say that xenoblade chronicles 2 doesn't have good combat because it does i mean to play a 70 80 you know 100 plus hour game you got to have good combat. And the fact that they were able to install new wrinkles into the combat the further you went along, I think was just masterful. It really was. And this game will just always hold a special place in my heart because, again, this was our first deep dive series on the podcast. Chris and I went through every single moment of that game and then put it in podcast form, and it was just absolutely fantastic. Legitimately, if we're going just based off experiences, this would be so much higher on a top 10 experiences list because this will definitely be a game that I remember for the rest of my life just based on the deep dive experience that we had with it. Uh, But yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 coming in at number eight. And at number seven, this was one of the first games that I played once I got back into gaming. There were several years where I strictly just played NCAA Football 14 and I didn't play any other video games. I, I did dabble into like Batman, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, those, those style of games every once in a while. But for the most part, I never really ventured out and played different games. My brother from another mother introduced me to The Last of Us. And he said, give it, give it about 15, 30 minutes. Somewhere around there, I'm going to get a text from you. And you're going to say, holy fucking shit. And let me tell you, that's what's fucking happened. I'm not going to spoil anything for this game because I think it is one of the best openings slash worst openings of all time, depending on how you look at it. The most emotional opening of a video game of all time. And I don't think it really is a question at this point or a debate. So coming in at my number seven, The Last of Us. I think this is another another one of those games on this list that 10 out of 10 experience. 10 out of 10 video game. I don't know what they could have done to make that video game any better. That is a masterpiece. I think the story is, if I'm looking at my list, I think this is probably the best story out of my top 10. Easy, easy. This is is when you look at some of the best stories, best narratives ever told in a video game, The Last of Us better be mentioned in that conversation. I think the stealth aspect is really great. Um, I think the combat is a little janky in terms of like the shooting and whatnot. It's very like Uncharted-esque, but 
I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. I think it gives the game a little bit more personality when it has that, that jankiness, kind of like a Dark Souls game, you know? But the story of Joel and Ellie is just absolutely phenomenal. That game just repeatedly just rips out your heart and is not afraid to put those characters into grave situations where it feels like you're going to lose a friend at that point because you're so attached to those characters. So I just think from beginning to end, The Last of Us is a 10 out of 10 game, one of the best games of all time. Um, just personally, I just think there are six more games that I enjoyed just a little bit more. Next up on my list, at number six, we have Dark Souls. This was my first From Software game, so and I have such vivid and fantastic memories from this. I, I don't ever remember getting truly just pissed off at Dark Souls. I know there were several times that I struggled, but I would just go level up and, and then come back and, and beat the shit out of the boss, right? Legitimately one of my favorite experiences of all time. I remember playing it on the ambulance non-stop. Played it on my Switch. Maybe not the best way to play it, but it was the only way that I could play it at the time. I beat every single boss. I did everything that you could in that game. Even, including the DLC, I beat every single boss, which I think the DLC for the Dark Souls is also in that conversation of best DLC of all time. To me, I think, yes, the game does feel a little janky with controls, but in terms of combat, in terms of what you do moment to moment in that game, the level design, all of that is just absolutely masterful. The fact that when you get towards the end of the game and you take this next little entrance or exit, I should say, and you come back to the hub and you're like, really? That's where that fucking led the entire time. Just absolutely fantastic. I don't think there was really a biome or an area that I just absolutely did not like. Uh, there were some that pissed me off for sure, but I loved every minute of Dark Souls. And it is a game that I have played a couple of times now. And it will legitimately always be one of my favorite gaming experiences of all time. Is it the best From Software game? It is not. Uh, but it is just an experience this is what got me into From Software games. I end up playing Dark Souls 2, 3. I end up playing Bloodborne, Elden Ring, Sekiro. I just started playing a whole bunch of From Software games after this one, and it made me fall in love with that developer and the style of games that they, uh, that they develop. So this game will undoubtedly always be in my top 10. At number 5, it is the last deep dive series that we did for the podcast. And it is a game that jumped up from being a, a game that was like, okay, I liked it. Did love it to being a top five game of all time for me. And that is final fantasy 10. If you want to listen to that deep dive series, again, you can find that on any of your favorite podcast listening apps. I'm trying to convert it to YouTube. Uh, stay tuned for that. But we did basically a, a walkthrough of Final Fantasy X in podcast form. And we recapped the entire story, giving us our thoughts and opinions on all the big story beats. And it was just one of the most unforgettable experiences I've ever had in a video game. Chris, Chris was fucking fantastic for this series, guys. Like, this dude did not let me fail on this game. He made sure that this was going to be a top 10 game of all time. And when I tell him it's going to be number five, the dude's going to be fucking ecstatic, I promise you. And if anything, going into the game, I told him there was no fucking way that he was going to make me like Blitzball. Well, guess what, guys? He made me fall in love with Blitzball. So that's the, that's the type of deep dive series and the type of memories that I have from that game. The fact that I went from I fucking hate Blitzball to, to, okay, yeah, I could see myself just playing that randomly anytime. Like, Blitzball is so fucking good. The characters, every single one of them, absolutely fantastic. And then the Titus and Yuna scene in the, uh, in like the little pond area with the trees and whatnot. One of the best cinematic scenes of all time, bar none. Like, you, it, it's in the conversation, okay? And I just think from moment to moment, yeah, it gets a little quirky at times, but what Final Fantasy game doesn't do that? And yeah, it is a little bit more linear, but I mean, this game came out, what, like in 2001 or some shit like that? So I mean, it came out a long fucking time ago. When you're talking about most influential games of all time, I think Final Fantasy X has to be in that category because of just the jump from what they did with Final Fantasy IX 
and the jumping graphics to 10 was just absolutely superb. And then the cinematic sequences on top of that were just absolutely phenomenal. And then the score. The score is, I mean, grant, granted, every Final Fantasy game has an amazing score, but I'm highlighting this one because it was that much better than all the others. But yeah, Final Fantasy X coming in at number five. At number four, I have Elden Ring. This is another one of those games that I will always remember my, my playing of it for the first time. I remember buying the collector's edition for Elden Ring. I mean, hell, if you look right here, I have the Melania statue from the collector's edition. I absolutely fucking love this game. I think this is the culmination of a lot of different ideas that From Software had. I think this is the game that they were like, okay, let's combine all of our best traits, our best attributes in, in video games and put it into one huge open world game. And they fucking did that and they succeeded. And the one of the best parts about this game is the fact that, oh, you're struggling with this one area? Well, you can just go somewhere else. You can legitimately go just about anywhere that you want and you can level up and accomplish other things. And then when you're ready and you're strong enough, you can go back and tackle that boss or tackle that zone or that uh, that castle, whatever. Um, you have really no rules in that game. And then all the types of builds that you can do on top of that, and then all of the uh, all the legacy dungeons, and I just there's just so much content in there. I put in 130 hours before even playing the DLC. And now Melania is the one boss I have not fucking beaten in that fucking game. Ah, uh, she's preventing me from getting my platinum. I've beaten everything else in that game, just not her. But again, I just think this is just every great thing that From Software has ever done, and they threw it into a bucket and just made a video game out of it and took out all the fluff. This is the perfect From Software game. I don't know how they ever follow up uh, this game with another game, to be honest with you. But yeah, this is a 10 out of 10 game. Uh, absolute masterpiece. And the boss designs, bro, get the fuck out of here boss designs are absolutely fantastic now some of the dungeons do kind of regurgitate some of those bosses and you gotta kind of fight them more than once but you know what i don't give a fuck so yeah overall guys fucking love that game it's gonna be in my top 10 till till the day that i die now i'm gonna cheat a little bit and i'm gonna include two games at the number three spot at number three i have legend of zelda breath of the wild and tears of the kingdom now, I typically wouldn't do this for any other game, but I'm going I'm to tell you why I have both of these games attached to each other, okay? Breath of the Wild, just by itself, one of the best experiences that I've ever had in a video game. One of my kids was just born, I played it for the first time, and I sunk over 120 hours to that game. Easy. Going into the DLC, 150 hours. Just, I could get lost doing anything in that game. And then trying to 100% it, with doing all the shrines, and that's what I did. I went and got all the towers, opened up the entire map, and then I went to every single shrine and knocked out all the shrines before I ever tackled any of the story missions, unless I just had to for a specific shrine. But I did all the side stuff before I ever tackled the main story. And again, one of the best experiences that I've ever had in a video game. Well, then Tears of the Kingdom comes out, and it is basically Breath of the Wild they, they took the bones from Breath of the Wild, and then they just added to it. So that's why I'm including Tears of the Kingdom into this. I think Tears of the Kingdom is definitely the better overall game. But it's hard to say Tears of the Kingdom without Breath of the Wild and vice versa. So I am cheating a little bit by putting it there at number three. Uh, to me, this is the best Legend of Zelda game of all time, bar none. I just think there's just so much shit for you to do in both of these games. It's kind of unreal. And I also do kind of hope that they kind of go in a different direction for a uh, for the next Legend of Zelda game. You know, go back and make it more linear. I don't know, take away the open world aspect of the video game to kind of change things up. Because now we've gotten two of these big ass games and they're very similar, very alike. So I think they have to go in a different direction for a uh, future installment. But these two games right here, 10 out of 10 masterpieces. I mean, you took a 10 out of 10 game you made another one, and then you just added on top of it. And to me, both of those are two of the best games of all time. It might be the two best Nintendo games of all time, maybe. And then at number two, and for all those people that know me, for all the people that have been following the podcast for any length of time, y'all know what my two favorite games of all time. It It's not a freaking secret. And 
the only thing that I could say that would make this a little bit more more tense, build the tension a little bit, would be if you didn't guess what number two was, then you're going to guess what number one is. Because, again, everybody knows what my top two games of all time are. At number two, Bloodborne. The Lovecraftian, Victorian-style era that they have incorporated into this game. One of the best designs of all time. One of the best world designs of all time. It has some of the best boss designs of all time. It's not even close, guys. Like, as much as I love Elden Ring, as much as I love Dark Souls, and as masterful as they designed that open world to Dark Souls and how everything kind of came to the hub, and it just it was just perfect, Bloodborne did it better. Yeah, Bloodborne did it better. I think the world, the aesthetics, the tone of the game, bosses, the score, the score is my favorite score out of all the From Software games. I just think everything about Bloodborne is just absolutely perfect. The combat is just so damn good. It wants you to be aggressive. You know, you you come from Dark Souls where you, you kind of want to go slow and steady wins the race, and they change it up and they make you go fast in Bloodborne with the, the rally effect that you get when you get hit. You gain some more uh, health back. Like, they nailed the game mechanics for Bloodborne to the T. To, to spice things up and change things from Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, to Bloodborne. You know, you could say some developers overcorrect sometimes, but I think the huge shift in gameplay for Bloodborne was absolutely fucking needed because I played them in order originally. This is several years after they came out. I think I played Bloodborne maybe a year or two after it already came out, and you can just tell that they were firing on all cylinders when they made this game. DLC, DLC is fucking amazing, okay? I'd also put that in the conversation of some of the best DLC of all time. But yeah, just legitimately one of the best design games ever made, for sure. Like, I just, I can't get enough of that Victorian, Lovecraftian world that they built for this game. Like, if we're going just based off of worlds, this is numero uno, and it's not even fucking close. So with all that being said, my number one game of all time, and I thought about it long and hard, okay, whether or not to move this down to number two or or how I was going to do it, right? But I recently played Bloodborne. I played it uh, earlier this year trying to get the platinum, and I'm fucking stuck on one of the damn uh, Chalice Dungeons. And after playing through the entire game twice now, I can confidently say that this is still my number one game of all time, and it's a, a little bit further of a divide than I thought it was going to be. Fire Emblem Three Houses is my favorite game of all time. I think as amazing as the characters are in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, or in The Last of Us, or in Final Fantasy X, Fire Emblem Three Houses does it a thousand times better. I think these have the best set of characters in a video game, period. The fact that you start over here with a group of characters that you have with your school, you know, by the way, Harry Potter-esque Fire Emblem game, sign me the fuck up. And then the fact that you grow with these characters throughout your 100-hour playthrough that you have with them. Like, I'll use Bernadetta as an example. When she starts off the game, she is anxious. She's scared. She never wants to come out. She's very much an introvert. Always wants to stay inside her room. And she's borderline crying the entire time, right? But as you progress through the game, she becomes one of the most confident characters in the entire game, period. And she becomes one of the best characters in the game, period. She was absolutely slaying motherfuckers when it came to the end game with her bow. And it's not just her. It's all the characters do that. They start over here and they just give each of these characters a complete character arc, and they just develop all the characters so damn well that you get attached to all of the characters. And then on top of that, the story is absolutely impeccable. Yes, it has kind of like a Dragon Ball Z anime flair to it, for sure. Um, and I'm not saying that as a negative. I, I fucking love that aspect to it. And I haven't even talked about the gameplay. I haven't talked about it because I wanted to save the best for last. It's hard for a game to hit two sides of the coin, essentially. So in this game, you basically go back to school and you're teaching a bunch of students, which is a part of your house. So in three houses, you're teaching a bunch of students that are a part of your house and you're teaching them to, to go into war, essentially. So when you have the Harry Potter-esque gameplay going on, 
you want to be in combat. Like you're going through all your daily activities. It's kind of like Persona 5 Royal a little bit. You're going through all your activities, meeting with your students, developing those relationships and falling more in love with those characters. But while you're doing that, you're like, fuck, I, I really just want to jump back into the combat now. But then when you go to the combat and you're playing through it and you're like, fuck, man, I really want to go back and further this relationship with this specific character. So it's like anytime you're not doing something, you want to be doing something else. And it's just this perfect, this perfect circle. Is this going to be on a lot of people's lists for top 10 games of all time? Probably not. But in terms of experiences, we did a, I think, a two hour long episode diving into Fire Emblem Three Houses, audio only. So you can go check that out on any of your podcast listening apps. Fire Emblem Three Houses is a, another masterpiece on this list. The DLC was really great. The DLC was fucking hard, to be honest with you. It was more difficult than the base game, for sure. But playing through this game multiple times, you still haven't seen everything. You can still change things from every single playthrough that it feels a little bit different every single time that you play it. And that's one of the things that's a little bit different in comparison to some of the other games that are on this list. Some of these games, like uh, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, yeah, you can kind of change things up a little bit, but I mean, it's still the core game is what you're playing, right? And same thing with Final Fantasy X. For the most part, you're going to play the same game over and over again. Last of Us, same thing. Fire Emblem Three Houses, there's at least three different paths that you can take. But with that, you can recruit different characters into your house each time. And it just adds a different element to that gameplay, a different element to that story that you're experiencing that time around. So to me, it is without a doubt my favorite game of all time. But guys, go ahead and leave me a comment down below what your top 10 games of all time. Am I right about some of these games? Am I not? Let me know in the comments below. And I will catch y'all next time on another episode. Laters.